We all want a magic golf club that makes this game slightly easier. So how have we actually let this one go completely under the radar? But considering this club promises to deliver the world, how did I buy this for 59 pounds including delivery. Ultimately, when we're talking about the easiest club in the world, it has to provide a certain level of distance without substituting a reasonable amount of accuracy. Long story short, if this club can do both, I might have just found your magic golf club. There are three main factors in golf that deem a club easy or hard to use. So let's start with the first one. The longer the shaft, the more speed, which over the years has been the trend. Manufacturers put longer shafts in the drivers and fairway woods and magic. The average golfer gains more distance off the tee on a good shot, but the side effect is less control of the club face and therefore can create more destructive shots in its wake. Not to mention the longer the shaft the harder it is to hit down onto the ball which is a big problem when hitting out of the rough. The second biggest factor making a club easier is head design. Ping have always been good for this in my opinion. The lower profile of the head doesn't help ultimate distance but in return you get great forgiveness heel to toe and again promotes higher launch which benefits that golfer that lacks confidence especially using a fairway wood off the deck. The third biggest factor in making an easy golf club to hit is how long the club is from the face all the way to the back. The longer the club, the higher the launch, the more likely you are to get that ball up in the air. And with a decent amount of loft, that high launch, that high backspin combination means it's a lot easier to hit a straight shot. The biggest drawback of this combination, especially for golfers that do swing the club quite fast, is the ball's gonna be spending more time going up in the air than it is actually going forward. Basically, is this club too easy for its own good? And you're probably wondering, Simon, how is that even possible? Well, let's get out of the box and let me show you. As you can see, fairly standard eBay packaging. <laughs> I might have been a bit early. This is gonna take ages to get out. That is definitely a first. <laughs> that has to be one of the most unique faces I have ever seen. And if we compare it to a standard four iron length, 38 inches, both of them. Now I thought Ping have a very shallow top to bottom and wide heel to toe. But I mean, this thing goes to another level. It's almost as if the Maisel Chipper and the Adams Hybrid had a fairway wood love child. And then lastly, front to back, pretty much the same as the ping wood. However, look at this concave we have in the back here, trying to drop that center of gravity as low as it possibly can go. 75 gram regular flex shaft. Oh my God. I feel like I'm using a kid's club. That is incredibly strange. Not gonna lie, I do feel quite confident with this, however. And that was heavy out the toe. Incredibly out the toe. Five shots hit. Look how consistent my block right is. <laughs> there is no question in my mind that if you're struggling to get the ball airborne, if you're struggling to get it out of the rough, if you're struggling to square up that club face, I mean, this club is just going to help. But I can already see a couple of downsides. Number one, I hit this as hard as I possibly can. I mean, it's only gone another two, three yards further than all the others. And that's because of this bad boy right here. Now I'm gonna hit a quick three wood, somewhat slower. And I've almost outdone it by 40 odd yards. And I know what you're saying, Simon, that's because you used a three wood. Well, let's hit something longer with the same amount of loft. Now I'm not knocking this club because the point of this video is the easiest club to make, but you've got to understand the sacrifices that this club does give you. The seven wood, I could get to 180 miles an hour. No chance am I ever swinging this at 180 miles an hour. Loft creates backspin and that helps get the ball up in the air. Hence why the seven wood, even though swung faster, 
basically didn't go further than the moon would anyway. The point I'm trying to make is that this is great for a complete beginner. This seven wood is gonna give you a load of club head speed and get the ball airborne. If you're a veteran losing club head speed, been playing for 30 years, this is gonna be a better club for you than this because you just won't get as much club head speed with the shorter length in shaft. Both of these are never gonna go as far as a three wood, but obviously this club is incredibly hard to hit, but we're not looking for the longest club for a golfer. We're looking for the most consistent golf club. And I honestly feel, even if you had incredibly over the top swing, always slicing it, this club is great because you're actually going to have a chance of closing the face. The longer the club, the harder it is to release it. That's why with the driver, we spend most of the time hitting this big slice. You have a four iron length fairway wood, even coming across the ball by 13 degrees, you create so much backspin and launch. I mean, that's gone a decent amount of distance. Not to mention brand new, this Moonwood MWA is $170 online. I picked mine up second hand on eBay for just under 60 pounds. Guys, if you have any questions on your golf bag or your swing, sasgolfacademy.com. Catch you guys later.